Hold on, live people. Give me one second. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGangie with political commentary and correct views for the mediaspeaks.com. I got to let you in on something I did the other day. This is a great experiment you're going to want to do with somebody. The wonderful Christelle is like addicted to pretty much everything that you, how do I describe it? Instead of doing the show, and she's decided to buy lottery tickets, and not really, but I just said do them. So she, the, the, the ruling argument, how many of you know somebody, and I'm going to get into all the news, don't click off, this is for the regular viewers. How many of you know someone that's addicted to lottery tickets? I don't mean gambling and destroying your life, that's not what she's doing. I mean somebody who is absolutely addicted to like scratch off lottery tickets and, and not hurting anything just always betting and they always say the same thing if you understood it you'd do it too so i did like the coolest thing i took her lottery ticket the scratch off and i ripped it in half so now i technically have to pay whatever the ticket would have been worth and i can't wait because i guarantee it's not worth anything at all but we'll see if she appears during the show to tell me that i owe money because as revenge she would never miss a chance to pop me for it right i'm dead serious she would never ever miss a chance to nail me on it so i'm most excited now to see whether or not, like, no, now I'm gambling. So, you know, like, I'm in on it. All right. And nobody cares. I've wasted a minute. And you, why am I listening to this show? We have tons of news to get to that doesn't involve whether or not I destroyed a winning lottery ticket. And I guarantee I didn't. Thehill.com. For those of you that don't want silliness, for those of you, give me the news. Give me the... Okay, here you go. Rand Paul will be allowed to run for president and Senate in Kentucky. Uh, this is no surprise. This has been the law forever. For those of you that think that Rand Paul is cheating, let me be the first to tell you that he is not states get to decide these things if your state says that you don't get to run for president as well as congress then you don't if it says that you do you do why because that's what the constitution says whether you like it or not it's the law of the land but before i get into this i'm gonna say some things that may no oh, no not may will be extremely unpopular and that's fine I'm ready for the backlash that comes because it doesn't matter if you think I'm right or not. The point is that I am right. And if I make you mad, then you're just more wrong than you were before you got mad because it doesn't change the fact that I am, in fact, right. That's why it's called the correct views. Get used to it. Rand Paul is going to lose the GOP nomination because, among other things, he did two things wrong. First of all, he was running on the fact that I am not Donald Trump instead of running on the fact that I am Rand Paul. Who do I like more? Rand Paul by a long shot. However, Trump is out there being correct on immigration while Rand Paul is just running his mouth about how bad Trump is. Point number two, that is fact. Whether you like it or not, Rand Paul wasted his five minutes of media attention on Planned Parenthood. Oh, but Sam, Sam, you're terrible. Don't you know Planned Parenthood were stopping the, the beating hearts of babies? I know they were. Guess what? Whether it's wrong or right, and I'm not saying it's right, conservatives, not only conservatives, people at the end of the lay care about the people that are already living more than we care about the babies that didn't make it. Now, I don't care if that sounds cold. I'm not happy to be telling you that that is truth. The point is that it is truth. Rand Paul should have run on his record, on his father's record, on the fact that the two agree on many things. They should have run on their taxes. The Planned Parenthood is not going to get you elected. Whether you want to hear it or not, it is in fact the correct view. Don't tell me it isn't. I already know it is. 
He has foobarred the entire campaign, and he will not get the nomination for two of the reasons that I just gave you. Now, am I going to vote for him? Yes, I am, because I believe in Rand Paul, and I believe in what he stands for. Hopefully, this will be the last that uh, we ever see from Jesse Benton, because Jesse Benton ran the Ron Paul campaign, and it was a disaster, and he's had his hands in the Rand Paul campaign, which has also been a disaster. And for people like me that were really, really rooting for Rand, that's a problem. And if you can, in case, case you can't tell, I'm very unhappy about it. But this is at least good news. Senator Rand Paul can run for both the White House and to keep his Senate seat in 2016. The Republican Party in Kentucky decided Saturday. Again, that's up to the Republican Party. It's fine. It's not cheating. It's the way that it has always run, and Democrats have the same leeway in this, as do libertarians, constitutionalists, unionists, greens, and etc. State law does not allow, again, state law, it's up to them, a candidate's name to appear twice in one ballot during the same election, but Kentucky GOP leaders have approved the use of a presidential caucus, which they are allowed to do, that would allow voters to cast a vote for Paul for president before the overall Republican primary election. The GOP presidential caucus will be held March 5th of next year, and a separate primary election for other offices, including Paul's Senate seat, will be May 17th. While Paul has been pushing, it says, for the maneuver, Republicans on the state party's executive committee said it had larger benefits to voters as a whole. It's not about Senator Paul, in my mind. This is about making Kentucky relevant. And again, it's up to Kentucky. It really is. It says, um, the decision to create the presidential caucus, there is an amendment that requires Paul to transfer $250,000 by September 18th. If not transferred by that date, the caucus will be canceled. So it's not a freebie. It's, it's perfectly legal, and it's a move by Rand and the Republicans in Kentucky, which is fine. It's constitutionally allowed. Uh, my bigger issue is, again, Rand has destroyed his run. And as much as I wish it wasn't true, he is not going to get this nomination. Are you going to vote for him for the uh, primaries? Great. So am I. I am. I swear to God I am. It's not going to do a damn bit of good. He should have spent more time on real issues that affect people that are living in the here and now instead of fighting Planned Parenthood. And if that is immoral, it might be immoral. But it is, in fact, the correct view. Um, this is another one. We are the government. Tactics for, tac for taking down the police state. It's an article that you're going to want to read all of, but I'm going to start with the... Um, the points that actually affect you. Earlier in the article, the uh, author is talking about uh, instances of why this is important. And I cannot stress enough, please read this. We are the government tactics for taking down the police state. Um, I am going to, though, get to the nuts and bolts of it here, which is why you tuned in to TCV. Listen to this. This is what you can do. Uh, employ militant, non-violent resistance and civil disobedience, which Martin Luther King Jr. used to great effect through the use of sit-ins, boycotts, and marches. Take part in grassroots activism, which takes a trickle-up approach to governmental reform by implementing change at the local level. In other words, think nationally, but act locally. While you're at it, nullify everything the government does that is legitimate, egregious, egregious, or blatantly unconstitutional. It says various cities and states have been using this tactic. It's a historical uh, tactic, by the way. And uh, it's a doctrine which mixed results on issues ranging from gun control to health care to claim freedom from federal laws. In other words, the feds do not trump the states. The states trump the fed. Um, where, nullif where nullification can be particularly powerful, however, is in the hands of the juror. A law professor, as a law professor, Ayaya Samin explains, jury nullification is the practice by which a jury refuses to convict someone accused of a crime if they believe that the law in question is unjust or the punishment is excessive. Again, it doesn't matter if you are... Uh, Let's say you, uh, you're, you have a DUI case and the person blew an 11 and legal is a 10. 
But you know that the person was as safe at point 11 as they were if they had never drank at all. You know that this is just a matter of hosing this person to make money for the state. So you rule against the state law because the state law is unjust no matter what the law says. That is what we need to see more of and that is exactly what we are seeing here being pushed and promoted by people like me who are right. According to federal prosecutor Paul Butler, Christel put that cigarette out. The doctrine of jury nullification is premised on the idea that ordinary citizens, not government officials, should have the final say as to whether a person should be punished. I swear to God, I'm about to puke in this studio. Why would anybody smoke a cigarette? There's nothing more disgusting than that. I'm like dying up here. It says, imagine that, a world where the citizenry, not the government, or its corporate controllers actually calls the shots and determines what is just. Listen to this. It says, if you are ever on a jury in a marijuana case, I recommend that you vote not guilty. Even if you think the defendant actually smoked pot or sold it to another consenting adult. As a juror, you have this power under the Bill of Rights, and if you exercise it, you become part of a proud tradition of American jurors who help make laws fair. In other words, jury nullification, it doesn't matter if the law has been broken, if the law is in fact unjust and unconstitutional. Friends, listen to this. Uh, Ashley Madison suicides over website hack. In my opinion, the people that committed suicide here should have been given uh, the key to the city for what they did. I am not an extremely moral person. I'm really not. I'm a person that appreciates it. If you don't smoke cigarettes in this house where the studio is so that I can breathe while trying to give a freaking report, that would be nice. Um, I'm the kind of person who is not particularly sexual moral, sexually moral, nor do I think that anybody has to be. Let's face it, the way I read the Bible, David did not get in trouble for having many wives. David did not get in trouble until he killed a man to steal his wife. I'm a little more lenient on that kind of thing than uh, many of my fellow Christians are as I die of tobacco smoke from the ever insensitive Christelle. Um, the bigger issue here is cheating. Don't be with someone if you're going to cheat. Plain and simple. Don't do it. And that's what we're finding here. Listen to this. Two individuals associated with the leak of Ashley Madison customer details have reported to have taken their lives, according to police in Canada. Um... The people that I expected to be taking their lives were the cheaters. I'm sorry, if you don't, if you're not cool with being with just one person, then be a swinger. Really. Or don't get in, don't get involved with somebody that thinks that you should do that. Um, this kind of thing is aggravating to no end. The police in Toronto gave no further information about the deaths. Ashley Madison's Canadian parent company, Avid Life Media, is offering a $240,000 euro, that's $500,000 cash, reward for information on the hackers. Details of more than 33 million accounts were stolen from the website, which offers users a chance to have an affair. And I've since heard that the owner of this is a loyal husband, and that he is... Uh, proudly loyal, but he knows that he is involved in an industry that is not. You know what? He is a piece of human filth. Now, I work in a strip club, and I know that a lot of people come to the strip club cheating on someone. By their definition, not mine. I mean, Christelle and I don't care how many strip clubs we go to, but I mean, we, we, we married wisely. Uh, for those that have a problem with it, I, I get that you come to the club that I DJ. I, you know what? That's different. I'm not encouraging you to come on saying, come bring your wife, bring your girlfriend, have some kinky fun, and I'll see if I can play something that doesn't suck, and you've only got a 50-50 chance on that, because most of the music out today is terrible. Uh, not because new music sucks, but because corporations suck. Just to be clear, I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. The bigger issue here is that cheaters deserve exactly what they get. I'm dead serious. I've been cheated on enough, and I'll tell you what. 
cheating isn't a matter of morality today. Cheating is a matter of life and death. Because if you bring home somebody HIV, you have, in essence, killed that person. Cheating should be considered attempted murder in this country and any country because until we have a cure for HIV, which we do not, readily available anyway, cheating is in fact attempted murder. And I would argue anybody to fight me on that. So I, the wrong people, in my opinion, committed suicide here. These people were heroes. Omega-3s may block psychosis years later. This is medicalpress.com. Medical Express with an X, so not an E. Omega-3, a fatty acid found in oily fish, and that's why I take fish oil, may prevent the onset of schizophrenia and other psychiatric disorders long after being consumed, according to a study released Tuesday. Um, for people that are allergic to fish oil, you can take CoQ10. Uh, it's a little bit overly expensive, but in, in, in light of all the things that... Uh, are beneficial from it. It's something I strongly suggest. Up to seven years after taking omega-3 supplements for 12 weeks, young people at ultra-high risk were less likely to have suffered the debilitating condition than a control group given a placebo reported the study. Schizophrenia is characterized by delusions and hallucinations, including hearing voices and seeing things that do not really exist. Uh, I have a f really close friend that believed that Samuel Jackson was in the house once, uh, and he wasn't on anything at all. So I understand how bad uh, schizophrenia can be. It typically emerges during adolescence or early childhood, either abruptly or gradually. There is no cure. Current treatment focuses on managing symptoms, but scientists have long known that patients with schizophrenia exhibit reduced levels of polysaturated fatty acids, specifically omega-3 and omega-6 in cell membranes. So what do you want to do? You want to take fish oil or CoQ10 or something like it because the long-term benefits are uh, over and over and over again. It helps with sugar. It helps with a number of things. And now, now we found that it even helps with uh, schizophrenia. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, Sam I. B. DeGange, doing political commentary for the Media Speaks, inviting you to go and look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. You will find right away that you have uncovered some of the absolute best writing that you have seen extant today. And it's going to come. It's going to be something you've seen because you looked up Mike McLaughlin. Uh, please do me a favor and make sure that you let him know you heard about his writings from The Correct Views. Also, friends, if you get a chance, call Change Transportation. If you're within about a 50-mile radius of Canton, Ohio, you will find, and I might add rather quickly, you will find that um, all in all, you'll get the best deal at the best price to go where you want to go from Change Transportation. Uh, guys, uh, we've got a few more stories to get to. Wisconsin High School to randomly drug test students. This is a terrible idea, and I'll tell you why. And it's not because I'm in favor of teenagers using drugs. It's because you're supposed to be teaching that the Fourth Amendment is a God-given right. By the very fact that you were born American, you were given inalienable rights. That means that those rights cannot be taken from you. As such, the Fourth Amendment, which is a right, it promises that you will not be subjected to illegal searches or seizures. And yet, what forced blood dry, uh, blood don blood uh, submissions at DUI checkpoints in Austin, Texas, going on all the way till the end of the summer? In order to get a population stupid enough to allow the government to do this without a phlebotomist, that's a, a blood uh, drawing specialist for you Usher fans, without a phlebotomist present, it's not even safe, nor is it accurate. In order to get a society stupid enough to go along with this, what you have to do here at 4.20 a.m. is find students that are taught to be spied upon and checked upon for absolutely no reason whatsoever on a regular basis. And that's what we're seeing here. 
I, I, I would strongly encourage everyone that are hearing this to contact the Crivet School District. Please, please, I am begging you, contact them and let them know that this is not acceptable. A Wisconsin high school district has been caught up in a controversy over a new policy to randomly drug test students, much like the prison would its inmates. The Crivitz CRIVITZ school district will usher in a new policy in the fall claiming to protect students. What, protect them from their God-given rights to not have searches or seizures? We have a growing drug problem in Marionette County, and in talking with the police force and talking with school administrators and other conference athletic directors, I just felt that a school we should do something to try to deter students, said athletic coach and varsity football coach Jeff Doshmer. So in other words, according to Douche Dorschner, in order to get to do anything in the school, you need to be drug tested and to make sure you're not on anything. In other words, you're, you're guilty until proven innocent, according to the Wisconsin Crivet School District. And if that sounds like something that is beyond the pale, that's because it's absolute BS, okay? It's absolute mind rot. And to subject students to this, I would argue, is nothing short of abusive and an injustice towards the rights that they were born with and that was given to them by God. That is another correct view. So please contact them and let them know they're full of shit. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, PrisonPlanet.com. California Green Party promotes free slaps for straight white men. This was going to be one of the dumdies of the day. But... I wanted to make it stand out as its own because a lot of people don't make it to the dum at the end of the show. And this was so stupid and so sexist that I had to point it out because the problem of sexism and racism in the country today is not from conservatives. It's from liberals. It's from Black Lives Matter. It's from Hillary Clinton supporters. It's from Bernie Sanders supporters. That's who it's from. It's not from anybody on the right. The California Green Party is attracting controversy after posting an image on its official Instagram page. Who the hell is on Instagram? Which promotes free slaps to be metered out to straight white men. The photo shows two women who look like dykes uh, sat behind a table which is covered with a banner that reads, Finally, free slaps for consigned straight identified white men. The image is supposedly designed to draw attention to a rape culture, which doesn't exist. A perennial obsession for feminists and liberals who have been vehemently debunked. That's because it's obviously not real. The word cisgendered means someone who identifies as the sex that they were born with, which is in fact the sex that they are, whether they like it or not. And he's become a pejorative term used by social justice warriors to denounce those with cis privilege. Well, quit trying to bang somebody of the same sex and expecting everybody else to accept it, and that won't happen. Do I think it's hot when girls bang other girls? Yes, I do. Do I expect you to accept it? No, I do not. That is the difference. The post attracted numerous direct comments, including from one woman who remarked, why is it just cis white males? Why not offensive? They are the only ones raping. I'm a rape survivor, and I hate this. In other words, it's just more of social justice warriors trying to come up with something that sounds like it matters because the Democrats and the leftists in this country do not have anything of substance to stand on whatsoever. And that brings us to the dumb D of the day. Oh, yeah. And the dumb D of the day, as always, uh, stands out. Uh, we, do once, uh, we do them once a day on show postings. We also have the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. If you've never seen one, do make sure you look it up. Uh, the dumb D of the day, friends, in an attempt to prevent drug overdoses, politicians propose to ban music festivals. This, this is hilarious to me as somebody who, um, I, I'm 42, I've DJed raves since I was about 19, 22, something like that. Never has any rave been responsible for anyone taking anything. They would take them whether there were a rave or not. 90% of the people that go to raves don't take anything at all. However, 
it has been decided by the geniuses who have now won the dumdy of the day that if you ban the music festival, then it will prevent people from dying of drug overdoses in Los Angeles, as if uh, the culture is going to die. The music has nothing to do with the drugs. That needs to be established first and foremost. Second of all, and I, you, know, you all know that I hate Walmart, I stood up for Walmart in my last posting, but I still don't shop there, uh, because they wanted to shut down Walmarts because people committed crimes in Walmarts, where even though Walmart is responsible in many ways for the death of America as we know it, it does in fact have nothing at all to do in any way, shape, matter, or form with Walmart. People will make their own decisions, and government is not to be someone's nanny. Well, listen to this dumdy from the day, a free thought project, John Vibes. After a number of tragic overdoses, which had nothing to do with the music, the festival, nor the promoter, music festivals in Los Angeles area, politicians are responding in typical statist fashion to prevent any further overdoses, banning music festivals. According to Fox 11, Los Angeles County Supervisor Hill Solis, who I wish you would all call, let her know on her machine that this is an infringement on the rights of non-drug users, and that would be Los Angeles County Supervisor Hilda Solis, S-O-L-I-S, introduced a motion, which is communist in nature, at a motion at a board meeting this week that would ban all music festivals on county property. And county property, the motion is a reactionary step following the death of two people at last weekend's hard music festival at the Pomona Fairgrounds. Well, since... Only two people died. How many thousands of people went to the Hard Summer Music Festival? Because I would like to propose that you need a festival every day. Because the other, I'm going to guess, 5,000 people there didn't die of a drug overdose. Maybe they would have if they had not been at the festival. Therefore, the festival killed two people but saved the lives of 5,000 people. Does that make any sense to you? Then why would the reverse make any sense to you unless you're an idiot? I am deeply troubled all oh, by the fact that this is the third such death to happen in my district in the last year and a half. No one should lose their life while attending a public concert. Well, then don't take drugs. And if you do take drugs, then you know what happens when you do it and you've rolled the dice. Shut the hell up. It doesn't have anything to do with the festival. At least said everybody who still had a thinking part of their brain. She added that these kind of events on county-owned land should be banned until we conduct a full investigation. No investigated niche. No investigation needed. You are wrong. You are wrong. And that's all there is that needs to be heard. How about that? However, festivals and other events are not to blame for overdoses or other personal decisions that attendees make on their own. This is especially important to consider when the event hosts, oh, I was way low, anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 people. Oh, but two people died, so you blame the festival. No, you blame the drug, the drug taker. And it is not up, the gut, up to the government to take the rights away from anyone based on the abuse of free will by other people. That is not opinion. That is fact. And that is a freaking correct view. And that's what you're listening to, the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks signing off. Friends, you can donate to the show by going to the correct views on hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. Also, do me a favor and look up the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. You will find them at the Media Speaks at hotmail.com. I, at themediaspeaks.com, and you can donate to the show at the correct views at hotmail.com. Good night, friends. God bless, and thank you for tuning in.